An active full wave rectifier circuit is shown here implemented using two op amps and two diodes. We want to see how the circuit is working in terms of receiving the input v uh, voltage Vn, which is a sinusoidal voltage, in this case Vm uh, sine omega naught t, in which omega naught is the radian frequency in radian per second, and Vm is the peak voltage at input Vm. We want to see how this circuit converts this Vn to this output voltage that is fully rectified in the form of Vm, absolute value of sine omega naught t, as shown here. Uh, as V-out voltage, and you can see that the positive input terminal is passed through the circuit effectively without any modification appears at the output, but then the negative cycle, during the negative cycle, when input is negative, then it's completely inverted and become a positive cycle at the output, hence fully rectified output. So the question is, how does how is the circuit working? One benefit of this circuit uh, from the get-go is uh, the forward bias of practical op-amp is usually nominally referred to as 0.7 volt, but actually this 0.7 is uh, varying over time depending on temperature and a bunch of other parameters, so it's not well regulated and it's very temperature sensitive. This, this circuit is able to overcome dependency on this uh, t uh, variable uh, value using because or using the negative feedback that is uh, available in the active implementation of this uh, fully rectified uh, circuit now or full full wave rectifier so how how does this circuit work let's make the assumption that op amps are properly biased whether it's plus minus 5 volt or plus minus 10 volt supply is connected for both op amps op amp 1 and op amp 2 Let's make the assumption that is the case, and uh, we're going to make the assumption that, of course, as you can see, the output of op amp 2 is uh, constantly connected to I inverting input, negative input terminal, and hence there is a always active negative feedback present for op amp number 2. Therefore, as long as it's biased properly, uh, it will be a negative feedback and uh, it's in linear region. So the same thing with op amp number 1. As long as one of these diodes are active, then uh, the output is connected somehow to to input negative terminal and therefore you can say that the op amp number one is also whenever it's properly on then it's working in linear region so I can say virtual short is valid for both op amp number one and number two they are working in linear region of operation and because of that voltage at positive input terminal is the same as voltage at input a negative input terminal or inverting input terminal and therefore you can see since positive terminals are grounded zero volt therefore negative terminal should be also at virtual ground or effectively zero volt so I'm gonna write zero volt here and I'm gonna write zero volt here as well okay so how is uh, the first portion of the circuit working all right let's focus on when Vn is a positive value as and uh, let's say at the beginning is increasing so as soon as it become a positive value it is sense over here because it's try to pull up these note here as as it is going up at the very input so as a result up have noticed that voltage at the negative terminal is trying to increase above the positive as a result op amp immediately being an ideal op amp with very large open loop gain will try to push the output toward the minimum uh, value which is the negative supply whatever it is negative 5 or negative 10 so but but in the process as soon as it tries to pull down the output voltage toward the most negative it will turn on this diode number d2 and uh, this uh, this diode d1 will, will be off because diode d1 noticed that uh, the voltage on the right side is going negative and therefore it turns off so during this process when when Vn is in the positive cycle D1 turns off D2 turns on uh, let's say with whatever forward bias voltage 0.7 volt nominal but it's varying uh, with, with temperature uh, it's is there so what happens is through R and R there is a current that flows through D2 and through the output of op amp that's the feedback loop uh, for op amp number one during the positive cycle of input all right so what's the benefit of that during this uh, process of course this node I'm gonna change the color so that it's uh, easily observable so this node is zero volt as because it's connected to negative terminal and uh, because of that 
there is plus minus V in drop across this resistor and the current, the resulting current that is going through this resistor is obviously Vn divided by R. It cannot go through uh, this route because input impedance of ideal op amp is nearly infinity or practically very large. It cannot go this route as well, so because the diode D1 is off. So the only way for this current is keep continuing toward this resistor R as well. So because of that, the same V in voltage appears across this R resistor as well, because this R resistor is the same as this R resistor. So same current through them, you will get the same voltage drop. So because here is zero volt, and then we have a plus minus V in drop across this R, we get negative V in here. Okay, that's very good. So during the positive cycle of input, we get negative V in, basically gain from input to this node, let's say to node Vm, is just minus 1. So I'm going to highlight it. Let me go back to a color. So during positive cycle of input, Vm, Vm or the voltage at midpoint of the circuit, uh, is just equal to minus Vn. So there is a gain of negative 1 from input to midpoint Vm. Alright, so that's what I need. Now take a look at the second portion of the circuit here, uh, actually here. This is a classic inverting amplifier in which we have uh, the op amp 2 in linear region of operation, virtual short valley, there is a virtual ground uh, at the negative terminal and therefore we can just simply write um, either the superposition because now you can see that two voltages are arriving. I'm going to use different color. So at this node we have Vn because it's directly connected to input and at this node we have Vm which is negative Vn. So therefore as a result um, just this, we have the setup that we have during this uh, scenario is this setup. I'm going to go back to this color. So we have positive terminal grounded. We have negative terminal connected via 0.5 R to negative V in, which is the this voltage, Vm. And then we have via R, we have a connection to Vn. And then we have a feedback resistor R that connects to output V out. So therefore this is a classic inverting amplifier using designed with op amp. So inverting amplifier and uh, if either we can use superposition to find the V out as, as a result of contribution of two voltages so w considering one of them off the other one on and so on and so forth. But uh, and uh, it's, it's straightforward to write V out. I'm going to write quickly V out, but I'm going to show you as well, uh, just in case. So V out is, of course, uh, minus R over 0.5 R, so R over 0.5 R, times Vn, negative Vn, Vm basically, and also pl uh, negative, again, R over R, so it's going to be um, R over R, and then Vn. So what are we going to get from this? We're going to get uh, here R, R cancel out, R, R cancel out, negative, negative, positive over 0.5 become 2 Vn, and then we have minus Vn. And hence, the result is just V out equal to Vn, C, as expected. During the positive uh, cycle of input, input just appears at the output as shown here. Now, I quickly wrote the uh, result of, I mean, the contribution of V in and negative V in uh, via this uh, inverting amplifier to the output effectively using superposition, but let me quickly also show um, using uh, the KCL or Kirchhoff current law at this uh, node here, the two current coming, one this current I1, the other one this current I2 should be equal to the current that is going out, let's say I out. So effectively using KCL or Kirchhoff current law or the law of uh, conservation of current, 
the two currents, the, oh, the, sum, the sum of the currents coming into a node should be equal to the uh, currents that are going out of the node. So I1 plus I2 in this case should be equal to I out. Now substituting I1 is effectively V in on one side of resistor R and the, on the other side we have zero volt. We know that the uh, negative terminal we know that the negative terminal is at virtual ground, so here we have zero volt, obviously. So across this resistor is, ha is only plus minus Vn. So I can say I1 is Vn over R, and I2, the same thing, except it's negative Vn over, negative Vn over 0.5R. And I out is zero minus V out, so zero minus V out, the two voltages across the feedback resistor R. So again, R cancel out from both sides of this equation. And you can see um, on one side we have V in minus two V in, this is negative two V in. So it becomes uh, minus V in. And on the other side we have negative V out. And hence we get exactly what we wanted. So V out is equal to V in. Okay, so with that in mind, let me now focus, now that we know that how the circuit is working during the positive, uh, let's say, portion of the input signal, now let's focus on the duration or the cycle when the input terminal is at negative values. So I mean here. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, so when we are during the negative um, cycle of input, what happens is, again, at this node, at this node, the circuit notices that input voltage becoming negative is trying to pull down this node and this node toward negative voltages, which means lower than the positive voltage of uh, the zero volt of uh, the positive or non-inverting input terminal of op amp one. Therefore, as a result, immediately op amp one, uh, which has a very large open loop uh, gain would try to push the output voltage toward the maximum voltage which is the let's say plus 5 volt supply or whatever positive supply is there but in the process of doing so it will turn on this diode D1 because diode D1 notice that voltage on this side is pulling up by the diode toward very positive values and voltage on the other side of diode is at zero or will be at zero forced by the virtual ground of the uh, up amp one in uh, let's say linear region of operation via negative feedback okay as a result what happened is diode d1 turns on with plus minus let's say nominal 0.7 volt forward bias that is of course uh, also varying over time slightly depending on temperature and a bunch of other parameters but then in the process because this voltage is now being pulled up by the output of the up amp as a result diode d2 turns off so when diode D2 turns off, now we have a situation in which op amp has the feedback loop, negative feedback active via this portion. So diode D2 is off, but then this portion is what uh, is, f is actually forming the negative feedback for op amp one. So as a result, what happened is we have zero volt here. Let me change the color so that it is uh, clear. So we have zero volt here because op amp one is in linear region with um, negative feedback loop. So it will enforce the virtual short and as a result it will enforce that negative terminal has the same voltage at positive terminal both at zero and therefore this node is zero. So that node is zero but the same thing happened with op amp uh, number uh, number two as well. Op amp number two is still uh, active in linear region with negative feedback as you can see and hence it, hence it enforces the virtual ground that I uh, showed here because of uh, virtual short. So the virtual ground is present here. So see with respect to the series of with respect to the series of these two resistors R and uh, 0.5 R during this process we have zero volt on the one side and we have zero volt on the other side so as a result nothing goes through these uh, series and because especially as I said D2 is off as well so the only connection they see is these two resistors are in series 
during this uh, duration when input V in is negative and zero volt is on one side, zero volt is on the other side. Therefore, the current that is going through these two resistors is zero. So it, it's as if they are open, nothing is there. So the only viable route that we have during this uh, cycle is just the route that is via V in and via this resistor R and uh, through the rest of the circuit. So I mean the circuit only for the second portion or last portion of the circuit, it's just this combination. That's it. So it's as if now the uh, second portion of the circuit is simply just, so I'm going to write it here, uh, during, so during negative cycle of input Vm or this midpoint that I just showed you this midpoint is sitting at zero so uh, Vm is at zero volt and what happens is the second op amp just looks like again positive uh, positive terminal is grounded negative terminal because of virtual short is at virtual ground as well that feedback resistor R is there. The only thing that the circuit notice is just via this resistor R there is a connection to Vn. That's it. So via this resistor R there is a connection to Vn. So that's what the circuit looks like during the negative cycle and this is obviously again a, an inverting amplifier that is even simpler than the first cycle. So similar to what I just said gain of this uh, inverting amplifier is simply V out is minus this resistor divided by this resistor so it's just and that's simply obtained by writing a KCL or a Kirchhoff current law or law of preservation of current at this node similar to what I did but you get negative R which is this R divided by R which is this R uh, times V in so effectively during this cycle V out is just minus V in which is exactly what we wanted because during the negative cycle what we want is uh, input is during the negative cycle input is negative so input is like this and we want the output to be like this and that is exactly what is happening via the negative gain that appears uh, in the voltage transfer characteristic of the circuit so that's the beauty of this circuit that uh, exactly during the positive cycle it just passed through for the input signal as I just showed you and during the negative cycle it would just uh, negate the input signal and hence effectively this circuit is realizing the absolute value function which translate to full wave rectification. I hope that uh, this example and this uh, explanation analysis of circuit, full wave rectifier circuit is helpful in terms of uh, both um, recognizing how the circuit is working and also understanding how the circuit is overcoming the dependency on the 0.7 volt uh, forward bias of the diode because effectively in this analysis we are not really depending on any assumption about the value of the forward bias of the diode. We didn't say it need to be 0 volt or 0.7 volt. As long as the feedback routes that we studied in the circuit are properly working then it, the circuit is working so uh, that's the beauty of the circuit I hope that this example is helpful